and welcome to Pattern and Craft. I'm Courtney, and today's video is a full tutorial of this beautiful friendship bracelet. I'm calling it the Macrame Diamonds Bracelet, and it's kind of my own invention, but it's just a combo of the chain link technique and also some traditional macrame knots. I'll be showing you the larger version for the most part, but I'll also go over how to make the smaller version. Let's get started. So first, of course, you'll need your strings. I'm putting the information here for both versions, so follow whichever one you want to make. You'll also want to follow the directions for whether you want ties or a loop. I'll be demonstrating how to make a looped start. So to make the loop start, you'll take your longer string and you'll take your other strings and fold them in half. Then you'll take the longer string that you've also folded in half and loop it around your bundle and pull it through the loop. This gets you started and then you'll continue on making the rest of your loop, but this will be basically the top of your loop. So we'll attach our work to a surface and start making forward and backward knots to make the macrame portion of the loop. This is no different from any other loop, so if you already know how to make this, you can go ahead and just skip ahead but I wanted to show the full tutorial of the entire bracelet in case anybody just wanted every single step. So you can see here, I'm just doing forward and backward knots to the right. So I'll just continue on with these knots until I get to about half the amount that I need for my loop. Then I'll flip my work over and then start going in the other direction. This keeps everything even. Resecure your work and start knotting in the other direction with forward and backward knots as we were before. Periodically, you'll want to stop and kind of check and see if you have enough yet for your loop. I think I have enough now for the rest of my loop, so I'm going to double check it. Yeah, that looks good. So once you have enough, you can go ahead and stop and pull it off. Here's our loop. Looks pretty good, huh? All right, so now we're gonna secure our work down. I'm just using masking tape. My favorite is painter's tape, and um, you can use any tape that you want, really. Okay, now we're gonna do the triangle start. So we're gonna separate the innermost strings out from the bundles, and we're gonna start on the left and we're gonna take that inner string and we're gonna do a backward forward knot onto all of the rest of the strings. Here's the backward half of that knot. And we're gonna pull it up to the right towards the center and then finish the knot with the forward half and then leave that string off to the right. Now we're gonna pull another string out from the center. We're gonna do a backward forward knot again onto all of the strings And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna finish our knot and then leave it off to the right. And then we're gonna continue that pattern um, with every string until we run out. All right, so we've gotten to the end and we've done our backward forward knot with the very last string onto the final string. We've got our left side of our triangle started. 
So now we have to do the same thing on the right. We're going to take our inner string and we're going to do this time because it's on the other side, we're going to do the, the opposite. So we're going to do a forward backward knot on this side and we're going to pull the string to the left. And then we're going to do the same thing. Leave that first string off to the side, take the next string, do a forward backward knot onto the bundle and continue on with all of the rest of the strings till you get to the end. All right, so we're gotten to the end of our string on this side. We're doing our very last forward backward knot onto the last string. And now we have both sides of our triangle. All we need to do now is to connect the triangle. So we're going to take the innermost strings and do a forward knot or a backward knot to join them. There we go. So now we're going to take that same string and we're going to continue on to the left and we're going to do backward knots onto all of the strings. This is the first row of our pattern. We're doing basically the top of the diamond. So go ahead and make backward knots onto every single string on this side. We're finished on the left side now, and we need to do the exact same thing on the right. So we're gonna take that center string again, the one that came from the center knot that we made to join the two sides, and we're gonna take that string and we're gonna make forward knots on this side all the way to the right. So it's basically the same thing as we just did, only in reverse. All right, now we're done on the right side. We're just making that last forward knot. Now it's time to make the second row. We're gonna basically do exactly what we just did, a row of backward knots and a row of forward knots. Although there was one, one difference, so pay attention. So we're going to join in the center again. You can do a forward knot or a backward knot. And then going to the left, we're gonna do backward knots all the way along, except we're going to skip the very last knot. All right, here's where it's a little bit different from the previous step. We don't wanna go past this knot. We don't wanna knot onto that last string to the left, so that's the difference. Now we're going to do the same thing on the right side, doing four knots all the way to the right, but not all the way, all the way except for the very last string. So now we're doing that last knot and we're leaving that last string on the right. So now we're done with the top of our diamond pattern. One more thing I forgot to mention, if you're not making the loop, you would leave enough string for your ties to come out the top. So you would start the bracelet the exact same way, you just instead of having a loop to start, you just have extra strings sticking out the top. 
All right, now it's time for the next step in the pattern. So I want you to take the two left strings and put them off to the side and the two right strings and put them off to the side. And now I want you to count three strings and put them off to the left and three strings and put them off to the right. And now you have the center bundle, which will make the design element in the center of the diamond. To make that, you're going to take each string on the left and right, just one string, and we're going to make a square knot over the center bundle. So the way you do that is you fold the right string over the top of the bundle, and then you take the left string, loop it over, and then over that string that you just folded over the top, but then under the whole bundle, and then between the right hand string and the bundle. So you basically just tied a knot around all of your strings in the center. This is the first half of the square knot. Pull it up until you're about at the center of where your diamond will be. Next, we're gonna do the same thing, but basically the opposite. We're gonna take our left string over the bundle and then bring our right string over that string and then under the bundle and then between the left string and the bundle. So it's the same thing, just flipped. And that finishes off our square knot. You can actually see the square shape right now as we bring it up. And then we will tighten it, just pulling each side of the string. You might need to do a little adjusting these don't land exactly perfect every time, and they do tend to kind of unknot themselves. So just um, reposition it and then pull the sides and adjust the center strings if you need to until everything looks correct. There you go. So we've got the central design and element of our diamond, and then all we have to do now is finish the diamond on the bottom. So we're going to take those three strings that we put off to the left and we're going to take the center string of the three and we're going to do a forward knot onto the string just to its right. Now we're going to take the string that we made the square knot with and we're going to do a forward knot onto that string. This one's the trickiest of all of the knots in the bracelet. For some reason, this doesn't wanna stay aligned. It wants to kind of separate. So just be careful when you're tying this knot. I'm tightening it against my fingernail just so I can kind of adjust it. And then you can slide it up and down the string if it kind of goes towards the center too far. You can adjust all of these strings later. So then take the next string and you're going to start doing four knots onto half of the strings of your bundle. It helps in this step if you separate your bundle of strings into two so that you don't do too many knots on one side. You might have noticed that the line of knots isn't a perfect straight line. It will be eventually, but you kind of have to make the line of knots first and then adjust it afterwards because they do kind of want to creep towards the center of the diamond. Once you've finished your last knot on this side, you can kind of take your fingernail and move the knots around. They slide on the strings here, so don't be afraid to adjust your work as necessary. All right, let's go to the right side now. And you're going to take that group of three strings and take the center string again. And this time we're going to be doing backward knots to the left. So not onto the string that it's to its immediate left with a backward knot. And then remember, this is the tricky knot. So you're going to grab the string you made the square knot with, and you're going to make a backward knot onto that. And then you're going to be making backward knots onto all of the other strings in your bundle. And don't worry if the knots aren't perfect. Like I said, we can adjust this later. We just have to get the knots made. I did notice that the, these knots look better on the smaller version of the bracelet. This is the 22 string and on the 18 string one, there was still some warping in this step, but not as bad. So if you're worried about that, then maybe start with the smaller version of the bracelet. As long as the knots are right next to each other, we can adjust everything else later. So do make sure that the knots are not separated by any string and are just right next to each other. But if they're not in a perfect line, that's okay.
Now we can just do a backward knot or a forward knot to join the two sides of our diamond. This completes the first row of the bottom of our diamond motif. You can go ahead and adjust it here. You can push the knots to where they need to be to be a straight line on the left and then on the right. It helps if you push down with your thumb on the center of the diamond on that square knot. Once your diamond's looking fairly okay, we can take that third string from the left and start making forward knots towards the center to complete the diamond shape. Each diamond has two rows of knotting. You'll want to be a little careful with the second row of knots. Um, don't pull too tightly or it might distort the diamond, but if it does, we can always adjust it later. Once we've completed the left side, we can go ahead and adjust the diamond again <laughs> and then go on to the right side, take that third string from the right, and that's the one we're going to be knotting with to make the second row of knots for the bottom of the diamond. So on this side, we'll just be making backward knots all the way towards the center. Make another backward knot to, on that very last string, and then go ahead and make a backward knot or a forward knot to complete the point of the diamond. Now we can adjust the diamond one last time, adjust our rows of knotting just to make them a nice square shape. So we can see we've so far completed the start of our bracelet and we've just finished this part of the pattern. Next we're going to do the little chain links between the diamonds. So for this step we're going to bring out the strings in pairs of two. Each chain link is made with two strings. We're going to reserve the three strings in the center and not use those. You can put those off to the right. So now we've got four little groups of two strings each. Just keep note that on the smaller version of this bracelet, there will be three groups, not four. So on our first group, we're going to be making a link that's two knots. I'm making four knots, so I'm taking my left string, making a forward knot onto the right string, putting that down, then taking the left string, making another forward knot onto the string that is now on the right until I have the right amount of knots. And again, for this link, it's two. The next link over, you're going to do four knots. So again, we're going to be doing four knots from the left to the right. Although note here, I pulled a little too tight and it distorted my diamond. Big surprise, right? So just adjust if that happens and then go back to making your links and try not to pull too tightly against the row of knots. So we're making four knots again, and we're doing four knots for this link. Once you're done with that, move to the next group over, and we're doing six knots for this link. As you can tell, it's an increase of two knots per link. So you can really do this any size and just keep to that formula. If you're doing the smaller version of the bracelet, this would be your last link. Since we're on the bigger version, you're going to do one more link, and this is going to be eight knots.
The next step is just doing the exact same thing, but on the other side. So we're going to pull out our strings in groups of two again. We'll have four links for this size bracelet, and we'll have three for the smaller version, remember. And then we're going to reserve those three strings that are in the center and not be using them yet. So put those off to the left this time. We're going to use the same amount of knots on each link and complete the right side just as we did the left. Now we've got both sides done. Now we can do the last step, which is starting the next diamond. Now we're going to be using those little groups of three strings. We're going to pull out the ones on the left and grab the central string. And we're going to start making backward knots, starting with the one that is directly to the left. Next, we're going to start joining the links and we're going to be making backward knots onto each string of the links. Make sure you do the right one. You don't want your links twisted. So we're going to be just making backward knots basically all the way across to the left. And that'll be making the start of our next diamond. Be careful with your tension here. You want to be right up against the next knot, but you don't want to pull too hard and you don't want to leave any gaps either. So go ahead and complete the row of knots all the way to the edge. Once you've made your last backward knot on this side, you can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to pull out our little three strings on this right side and we're going to grab the center one again. And we're going to make forward knots this time all the way to the right. All that's left to do now is to finish the second row of knots for the top of our diamond. Now remember, this is similar to that first step that we did when we first started the bracelet. We're going to go all the way to the edge except for that last string. So pull the, left, the last string out to the side so you don't forget and knot onto it. So now we're going to make our rows of backward knots on the left and forward knots on the right. Remember, this is where we stop this row of knots. Time to do the right side. So just grab the string that's in the center, coming off the center knot, and make four knots all along on the right side, all the way to the edge except for that last string. All right, I've done both sides, and that's basically the same thing we did at the top, except that it's joining the links that we made instead of starting from the triangle end. So I can show you again the square knot because it is a little bit confusing. So I'm going to pull off two strings from each side, then three more. Now we have our bundle in the center. Then we're going to grab the left string and the right string of this bundle, and we're going to make our square knot. So we're going to fold our right string over the bundle, wrap our left string around and under, and then through between the right string and the bundle, and then pull that up to the center. Adjust if necessary. You want it to look like the first one. So now we're gonna do the left. We're gonna bring our left string over the bundle, bring our right string over that string and under the bundle in between the string, left string and the bundle. 
creating that square, then pull the knot up and tighten. Adjust if necessary. Now you've got the center of your next diamond motif. So now just keep completing the same steps that you've seen and repeat them and you'll have a bracelet. So I've gone ahead and completed the knotting of this bracelet. All that's enough to be done is the bottom of the last diamond and the finish of the bracelet, which will be a triangle end. So here we go. We're going to do the same steps. We're going to pull out the two to the side, then the group of three, grab the center and make four knots on all of the strings until we've closed the diamond on the left side. Remember to only knot onto half of the strings in the bundle. Adjust the diamond and then move on to the right side. Use the center string, knot onto all of the remaining strings with backward knots. Then join the diamond, adjust if necessary, and then complete your second row of knots on the left and right using forward knots or backward knots respectively. Remember to not pull too tight here or you'll distort your diamond, but if you do distort the diamond, remember we can adjust it. So don't stress out. This is, everything's fixable, and even if something's knotted completely wrong, you can always undo it too. All right, so now we're all done with the bottom of our diamond. We just need to make the triangle and finish. So take the string that is the second to the left, and then knot onto the string that is to the left of it with a backward forward knot like this. Next, we'll group those two together and then we'll take the next string over to the right and then onto that group of two, we'll make another backward forward knot. This is your pattern. So each string that we've just knotted with will add to the group, then grab the next string over and make a backward forward knot all along the side until we reach the center. It creates a really nice finish. Just watch out there, the knots here are nice and tight. You want a good tight tension. I'll meet you back here when we're all done with this side. Now they're all done with the left side, we just have to do the right side. And it's the exact same steps but flipped. So we're going to take again the second to last string from the right side. And this time we're going to do forward backward knots. So do a forward backward knot onto the string to its right. Then group those two together, take the next string do a forward backward knot again onto those. And then we're going to just continue that same pattern all along until we get to the center. Now we just take those two strings that we were knotting with, the one on the left and the one on the right, and we're going to just do a forward knot or a backward knot between them to join them. This just keeps everything a little bit more secure. 
So I'm going to be doing two ties on this bracelet since we have a loop at the other end, but on the smaller version of the bracelet, I'll just do a single tie on each side. All right. So I'm going to start on the right and I'm going to make a four strand round braid. So that means I have to break up my strings into four equal groups. I might have to split some of the strings because there's not an even amount of strings. So that's okay. I do that all the time. Splitting strings within some embroidery floss is actually fairly easy because they're made up of six individual strands. So now I've got four approximately even groups and I can start my round braid. For starting my round braid, I like to first cross the two center strings and then I do under two, back over one, under two, back over one, switching from left to right and I tighten in between, under two, back over one, under two, back over one, tightening as I go. So that's the pattern for the four strand round braid. You can use any tie here that you like. That's just the one I chose for this. I actually have a separate video with many different styles of ties. So I'll link that below and up in the card on the right. If you want another idea for a different type of tie for your bracelet. So I'm just going to continue my braid until it's the length that I'd like it. Now that my tie is the length that I want it, I just have to finish it with an overhand knot. So hold tight to the bottom of the braid, flip your string around and over and on through, and then pull down. Now you've got an overhand knot. Now I do one more trick for mine so that they look nice and tidy and not too big. I actually go through and pull each individual strand tight. I go one by one, Pull it as tight as it'll go, and then that makes the knot much smaller and much tighter, and it doesn't ever come undone, and it looks much nicer. If you've never done this before, I encourage you to try it. I promise it's worth the extra work. Now I'm just going to go ahead and make my second tie, and then clip the end off. And that might be the very best part because it means the bracelet is done. Here's the bracelet. Doesn't look good. I hope you liked learning all about how to make this. We have our nice loop start. We have our beautiful diamonds. We have our links. We have our triangle end and we have our ties to finish. I just love when I finish a bracelet. It's so satisfying. All right. So I promised you that I would show you how to do both sizes, right? So here's the other bracelet. It's 18 strings, whereas the one we just finished was 22. And I finished it to the point where it's kind of the same as the start of the bracelet. We would start the bracelet the same, remember? Now I'm not actually gonna go through all the steps again because they're basically the same. The only thing that's different is the center of your bundle for the square knot has fewer strings. And like I mentioned before, the links, are, there's three on each side instead of four but I thought it might be nice to be able to see the bracelet being made in the other size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a time-lapse with some music.
Okay, well that completes the bracelet. Um, I did actually want to show you the very end because I wanted to show a twisted tie on this bracelet. I did a twisted tie on the one side already, so I'm just going to finish off the bracelet by doing that here at the bottom. So it's really easy, you just split the ties into two. You just want two even groups and then you start twisting them. I twist to the right, so each twist each side to the right and then start twisting them around each other to the left. It goes really fast, I didn't have to speed this up, this is actually how fast it goes. So it's a lot quicker than a braid, but it's actually a really nice finish, so I encourage you to try twisted ties if you haven't already. That's pretty much it. I finished my tie now. I just need to double check the size against the other one. I like my ties to be even on both ends of my bracelet. So here I am just checking that and then I'm going to just hold my fingers on the twisted tie where I want it to end and then undo it, check it again. I think I did a little too much so I'm adding a little back and then I'm going to pinch it then make my overhand knot like I did with the last tie. Over, around, and through. And then I'm going to do my little trick where I pull all the threads and get them all tight so that the knot's nice and secure and nice looking. All right, that's it. Now I just have to clip it. Best part of the bracelet. And then I just kind of fluff the ends. All right, that's it. If you watch to the end, I'm actually really impressed. <laughs> Epic tutorial. We have our bracelet of both sizes, our little twisted ties on this one. And here's the both of the final bracelets. And you can see they turn out really well. So again, we have the loop start for the larger bracelet with two ties. Beautiful diamonds in the center. And then the twisted ties on both ends for this one. Triangle ends on both. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about this bracelet. I just kind of created it one day and everybody really seemed to like it on Instagram. So. I hope you'll go ahead and give it a try, and if you do, I hope you post a picture and tag me on Instagram or let me know, comment down below. Um, let me know if you'd like to see any other specific things, tutorials for anything in particular. Please uh, like, subscribe, comment, share, and thanks so much for joining me. Happy crafting!